Mr. Speaker, having now successfully stabilized the government of St. Lucia's fiscal position, I'm very pleased to deliver the 2024-2025 budget statement of estimates of revenue and expenditure. The 2024-2025 estimates we lay the foundation for sustainable growth in the economy and we provide real hope for our people. Hope that will provide investment and employment opportunities across all major sectors of the economy. We are able to achieve that feat despite the precarious position of the economy in 2021 and worsened by the COVID-19 pandemic. We will continue to provide tangible expressions of our commitment to putting people first. Mr. Speaker, in presenting the 2024-25 estimates, it's important to reflect on the government's performance in 2023-2024. In addition to showing we are an accountable government, this process of reflection will show that this government is credible, delivering on the promises it makes. This is a government that has earned its trust, the dividends of which are sh showing with increasingly investor confidence and respect and fruitful cooperation with friendly governments and regional and international institutions. In preparation for today's sitting, these estimates of revenue and expenditure were distributed last Tuesday evening after the meeting of the House of Assembly providing eight clear days for members to adequately review the figures for an informed debate. The global economic environment for the 2024-2025 is no less challenging than that of the previous fiscal year. Global economic growth remains sluggish, interest rates remain high, as major industrialized countries try to keep inflation under control. Supply chain issues remain a problem, and the security of the world continues to be undermined by the wars in Ukraine and Gaza. And right at our doorsteps, the political instability and violence in Haiti. The uncertainty of the possible negative effects of climate change are ongoing threats to our survival as a small island developing state. It is imperative that provisions be made to build resilience for adaptation to climate events in all our infrastructure and agricultural programs. Notwithstanding the economic global challenges during 2023, 2023, 2024, this government, as the economic data will show, has done well in managing the economy. Our financial ratios illustrate fiscal prudence and responsibility. Mr. Speaker, as it is customary, and in keeping it for our public finance management legislation, today we are presenting the first part of the process, which is the presentation of the estimates of revenue and expenditure for the fiscal year 2024-2025. The appropriation bill will be presented later, in April 2024, when the policies that underpin this bill will be articulated and discussed. Mr. Speaker, as I have indicated earlier, the foundational theme underlying this government's strategic initiatives has become an article of faith, putting people first among members of my government. Mr. Speaker, permit, permit me now to account for my government's stewardship of the economy for 2023-2024 before the presentation of the estimates for 2024 and 2025. Mr. Speaker, my presentation, for the most part, will focus on the budgetary summary, while ministers will provide further details as they present on their respective ministries. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to report that government's performance improved over the fiscal year 2023-2024, despite the challenges that I spoke of earlier. With customer and investor confidence on the up, Total revenue of $1.68 was raised to finance government's operations and capital projects, the elements of which are as follows. Domestic revenues, $1.28 Loans, 
140 million grants, 73 million bonds and treasury bills, 82.6 million. Mr. Speaker, on the expenditure side, the government through prudent management will have kept well within the 2023-2024 budget ceiling of 1.856 billion. The, the data up to February 2024 points to government spending approximately 1.68 million for the fiscal year 2023-2024, an estimated 9.3% below the approved estimates of 1.856 billion. In 2023-2024, expenditure on government operations fell by 9%, moving from 1.44 billion to 1.31 billion due to a reduction in project operating costs. Additionally, there was lower expenditure on capital projects of 259.6 million as compared to the project expenditure of 302 million. Delays experienced in procurement and administrative processes were the main reasons for the shortfall. Capital expenditure increased over last year by 68 million or 4%. Mr. Speaker, this year there was a primary surplus of 104 million, 42 million more than last year, and 62 million more than the approved estimates. Current account surpluses of 156 million or 47 million over 2023 and recurrent account surpluses of 46 million or 39 million over 2023. Overall, Mr. Speaker, the primary balance is 1.5% of GDP as compared to 1% last year. The analysis shows that the results of this fiscal year were better than last year illustrating an improvement in the performance of the solution economy. These surpluses are not to be interpreted as the government having extra cash. Instead, it is the result of prudent fiscal management of the country's finances, which allowed it to more than meet its recurrent expenditure, leaving excess revenue to cover in part the country's debt obligations in interest payments and principal payments. Mr. Speaker, had we not been able to do so, the government would have had to borrow to meet some of its recurrent expenditures, like salaries and wages, rent, utilities, and the like. We have responsibly guided this scenario and will continue to avoid it with prudent fiscal management of the government's financing. Mr. Speaker, the primary surplus balance indicates that the country is developing the capacity to reduce its level of debt over time. A deficit on the primary account would have indicated that revenue on grants would be inadequate to pay the interest on debt. As a, as a result, no contribution would have been made towards any reduction in the debt expenses. Mr. Speaker, I hope this explanation has debunked the idea by some who may wish to mislead the public that government has generated more cash than it needs. Mr. Speaker, notwithstanding these current account surpluses, the government will experience an overall deficit in 2023-2024 of 111 million or 65 million less than last year, indicating a lowering of the deficit gap. Mr. Speaker, I look forward to the day when our revenue and grants will be sufficient to cover both current and capital expenditure, leaving us with an overall surplus. <clears throat> if this country is kept in the hands of responsible men and women to administer, as is the case now, it may one day get there. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, wages and salaries for the fiscal year 2024 of 517 million are anticipated to fall below the approved estimates of 531 million by approximately 
2.6% of 14 million. This reduction primarily stems from the lower than expected project management expenses and emanating from delays in project implementation. Wages and salaries for 2023 were 545 million, or 18 million more than this year, due partly to the payment of retroactive payments to public servants last year. Mr. Speaker, the debt payments are the first call on the consolidated fund, and every effort continues to be made to honor these obligations in a timely manner. Mr. Speaker, for the year-end outlook, we anticipate 326.2 million will be paid towards our debts, 215.1 million in interest payments, and 111.1 million in principal payments. Last year, we spoke about the increases in interest payments due to the significant upward trend in the SOFR rates because of the steady increases in the federal fund rates during 2023. Although the rates remain high, the estimated amount projected fell below the approved estimate for 2023-2024. Mr. Speaker, for the year in outlook, this government would have paid $231.5 million in transfer payments, 3.2% lower than the approved figure of $239.1 million, but 10.5% above the payments made in 2022 to 2023. These payments went to subsidize the operations of state-owned entities, increases to organizations supporting the poor and marginalized, public assistance to the most needy in our society, and the payment of school facility fees. Mr. Speaker, expenditure in goods and services will amount to $309.9 million for 2023-2024, approximately $95.9 million be below the amount approved for the same fiscal year. Mr. Speaker, in this category of expenditure are rentals of government premises, utilities, training, consultancy fees, operational maintenance, and purchase of supplies and materials. The low expenditure than what was approved is mainly due to reduced payments for consultancy services. I'll read that again, Mr. Speaker. The low expenditure that was approved is mainly due to reduced payments for consultancy services related to capital projects and other government initiatives. Mr. Speaker, in the 2023 2024 budget year, we approved 302 million in capital expenditure with 19.2 million being non-project capital and 282.9 million for capital projects. Non-project capital items refer to the purchase of government assets, such as vehicles, furniture, and other equipment not associated with projects. While project, ex while project capital refers to buildings, infrastructure, and equipment associated with specific projects. Mr. Speaker, we are projecting an overall spend of $259.6 million in, in capital expenditure for the year 2023 to 2024, a 14.1% decrease from what was approved in the estimates. Mr. Speaker, a significant portion of funds allocated for capital expenditure comprise of design finance construct DFC commitments. For the year 2023 to 2024, the government was obligated to pay 106 million to settle DFC commitments, limiting the government's investment in new infrastructure. The government's priority now is to significantly reduce these DFCs to provide the fiscal space for the implementation of key infrastructural projects. Mr. Speaker, the enactment of the procurement bill is proven to be onerous and has resulted in an impediment to the government's level of project implementation as it relates to the procurement of goods and services. There is therefore a need to revisit the act 
with a view to finding an optimum balance among the essential elements of good governance. Mr. Speaker, there is an urgent need to remove some of the administrative bottlenecks that continuously undermine the level of implementation of government projects. We shall be addressing these bottleneck issues in 2024-2025 fiscal year so that we can deliver the much needed services to the people of St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, despite these challenges, this government will continue to deliver on its capital portfolio. I shall provide more details of these projects during my policy address. Public sector projects this year, 2023-2024, included renewable energy, energy sector development project, OECS tourism projects, community tourism projects, disaster vulnerability and reduction projects, St. Jude reconstruction project, commencement of construction of the Northern Police Headquarters, and commencement of construction on the custody suites. I now turn to the revenue, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, allow me to discuss government's revenue performance for the fiscal year 2023-2024. Mr. Speaker, there has been much misinformation and exaggeration from the opposition of the impact on the local economy regarding the implementation of the health and security levy. For the purpose of clarity, the health and security levy provided a relatively small but important collective contribution to the huge demands that health and safety places on the resources of the country. Mr. Speaker, the projected collection from the health and security levy was approximately 35 million designed to finance in part rising health care costs and security needs of our country. However, given the delay of implementation of the levy, we are estimating a collection of 18 million by the end of the fiscal year, 48% less than projected. This means, Mr. Speaker, that from the increase in revenue of $118 million over last year, only $18 million can be attributed to the health and security levy. Mr. Speaker, an analysis of the country's health and security obligations should place in context the need for the levy and the need to be proactive in taking measures that will help the government keep, case, keep pace with rising costs, especially in health. Let us take a closer look at what government spent in this fiscal year 2023 to 2024. The direct cost of health care, provision of health care services, 160 million, capital expenses, expenses. St. Jude Hospital Reconstruction Project, 17 million. The health System Strengthening Project, 5.3 million. OECS Regional Health Project, 2.3 million. Universal Health Coverage, 700,000. Other projects on the health, 3.4 million. Total capital expenses on the health, 28.7 million. Total health expenses, 188.7 million. Other expenses. The government is indebted to several private, local, and foreign healthcare facilities that provide medical care to citizens. National security. Provision of national security services, 84.7 million. Capital projects, 1.5 million. Total expenses. 86.2 million. Other expenses relating to the purchase of vehicles and equipment will be outlined in the policy statement. Mr. Speaker, note that expenses for bodily have not been included. Mr. Speaker, direct government expenses on health and security was 275 million for the fiscal year 2023 to 2024. However, 
only 18 million was collected from the health and security levy to fund the needs of the country. Mr. Speaker, I want to repeat, direct government expenses on health and security was $275 million for the fiscal year 2023-2024. However, only 18 million was collected from the health and security levy to fund the needs of the country. Mr. Speaker, although we will fall short of our projected total revenue target for 2023-24, revenue collection continues to indicate an upward trend because of increasing economic activity, resulting in improved performance in several revenue areas, notably personal income tax, taxes on goods and services, and excise tax on petroleum products. Mr. Speaker, grant receipts are normally tied to the implementation of projects. With the less than desirable level of project implementation, only 73 million has been anticipated, a 50.3% decline in the amount approved for 2023-2024. In addition, Mr. Speaker, non-tax revenue is projected to perform below the approved amount by approximately 29.9 million due to lower receipts of voluntary transfers. Based on the foregoing, Mr. Speaker, total revenue and grants fall short of the target receipts by 121 million or 7.8%. Mr. Speaker, when compared to last year, recurrent revenue increased by 124 million and total revenue increased by 118 million. Financing. As previously indicated, the government anticipates an enhancement in its fiscal operations, leading to a narrowing of the fiscal debt of the fiscal deficit from the approved estimate of 176.4 million or 1.8% of GDP to an estimated 111 million or 1.6% of GDP by year end. Additionally, the, the primary surplus is forecasted to exceed the approved amount of 42.4 million, reaching a total of 104 million. The projected outturn entails disbursements towards the following items of expenditure. <coughs> Loans, 139 million, reflecting a strategic utilization of borrowing to meet critical funding requirements for the developmental projects and infrastructure. Mr. Speaker, let me repeat. Loans for 2023, 2024, 139 million dollars. Loans received for 2023-24, 139 million dollars. Treasury bills and bonds, 82.6 million, demonstrating the approach in utilizing debt instruments to manage liquidity and meet short to medium term financing. This includes the insurance of treasury bills and bonds to efficiently raise capital while maintaining financial stability and market confidence. The government's ability to raise capital relates to high investor confidence in St. Lucia since the, this government took over the management of this country. This, this was evidenced by the debt unit recording over 92% rollover of treasury bill instruments. Mr. Speaker, the government remains committed to prudent financial management, leveraging a diversified financing strategy that encompasses bond raising, loan disbursements, and treasury bills to ensure sustainable fiscal health and economic growth. In 2023-24, 2023-24 was a fiscally well-managed year, setting the platform for an even better 2024-2025. Mr. Speaker, I come now to the 
2025 estimates. Mr. Speaker, this government has been delivered successfully on the promises made to the people of Solution in its last budget, confidently seeks to deliver even more to the people of Solution in its estimates of revenue and expenditure for 2024-2025. Mr. Speaker, we are steadfast in our commitment to meeting the hopes and aspirations of the people of St. Lucia. Fiscal responsibility, truth, truth, and respect for the people of St. Lucia will continue to guide what we have promised in our 2021 manifesto. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, as we go through the budget processes today and next month, our intentions will be fully articulated. Mr. Speaker, the theme for the 2024 estimates have been titled the Year of Infrastructure. Our aim and objectives are to transform the economy of St. Lucia through infrastructural development, physical, social, and digital. In the upcoming year, we plan to focus on the following. One, road expansion and repair programs island-wide. Two, school plant rehabilitation. Three, government plant re refurbishment. Four, construction works at St. Jude Hospital. Five, commencement of work on the Sufre Hospital. Six, establishment of the Castries Urban Polyclinic. Seven, completion of works on the Larissus Wellness Center. Eight, rehabilitation of sporting facilities, including Dairon Sami Cricket Ground, for readiness to host the ICC Cricket World Cup. The refurbishment, the refurbishment of the Viewfort Stadium, Min, the Mindo Philip Park, and Marsha and Marsha Grounds, the Bellevue Playing Field, and the Grosily Playing Field. Nine, construction of the National Aquatic Center. Ten, housing developments in Roseau, Casaban, Shop. Eleven, expansion of energy projects to seek alternatives that will, di that will diversify our, en our energy needs and reduce our carbon footprint. 12, the library market. 13, rehabilitation of the Rudy John Beach Park. 14, the Grand Riviere Community Center. 15, the Northern Police Headquarters. 16, the Northern Police Auditorium. 17, completion of the custody suites. 18, the Caldesac Community Center. 19, Community Center for Castries North and Castries East. 20, Completion of the control tower at the Hiranora International Airport. 21. Commencement of the terminal building at the Hiranora International Airport. 22. Private public sector construction by GPH at Port Castries and Soufre. 23. The Canaries Market. 24. The Miku Jetty. 25. Community, community tourism projects. 26. Repairs to fishing complexes. 27, the Viewford Entertainment Center. 28, the... <laughs> it's as if it's, we spoke of... <laughs> 28, 28, the halls of... 28, the halls of justice. 29, the digital infrastructure enhancement. 30, investments in upgrading government services to online platforms. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, we shall seek to strengthen the, reliance, the, the resilience of our fire service, expand food security programs, continue to support our youth and small and medium-sized enterprises, and leveraging the opportunities the blue economy presents. Mr. Speaker, there will be something for everyone in this budget. As we improve our infrastructure, citizens can look forward to better roads, safer school plans, housing opportunities, and increased support for the poor and vulnerable members of our society. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, We intend to continue to expand our digital infrastructure by completing key projects 
that will improve the delivery of government services to the public and reduce the cost of doing business. Mr. Speaker, during this fiscal year, investment from the private sector is expected, is expected to be robust, particularly in the tourism industry. Mr. Speaker, I will have more on these and other initiatives during my policy statement next month. Summary of the 2024-2023 estimates of revenue and, and expenditure. Expenditure. Recurrent expenditure, 1.502 billion. Capital expenditure, 298.9 million. Interest payments, 232.5 million. Principal payments, 92 million. Total expenditure, 1.89 billion. Revenue. Tax revenue, 1.33 billion. Non-tax revenue, 146.8 million. Capital revenue, 2.8 million. Grants, 108 million. Total revenue, 1.576 billion. We project an overall deficit of 214.9 million after deductions of principal payments and refunds. We forecast a 5.8 nominal increase in GDP for 2024-2025 to 7.3 billion from 6.9 billion for 2023-2024. Mr. Speaker, as the fiscal position of our country continues to improve, we expect that the administrative procedural bottlenecks and difficulties in accessing government services will be removed. This fiscal year, government will continue on the path of fiscal consolidation and economic growth. However, enhancing the quality of life of the people and creating opportunities for wealth creation will remain the main objective of this government. Recurrent expenditure. Mr. Speaker, for the 2024-2025 financial year, the government is proposing to spend $1.5 billion in recurrent expenditure, representing a 4.2% increase over 60 of $60 million over the amount approved for 2023-2024. This level of increase in recurrent expenditure over the last year indicates the government's commitment to improving the quality of life of the people. The government's efforts, coupled with a rise in investor confidence and growth in the private sector, provide encouraging signs that real economic growth in 2024 is expected, barring some natural disaster or negative global economic events. Recurrent expenditure represents 79.3% of total expenditure, compared to 77.7% approved for the 2023 fiscal year. This increase in expenditure is reflected in all categories due to increased government services and higher rental payments. Mr. Speaker, the component wages and salaries represent the land share of recurrent expenditure, amounting to 577 million, comprising 460 million in salaries and 117 million in retirement benefits, and is approximately 40% of the upcoming budget. This amount is approximately 1.2% over the amount approved in 2023-2024 and 5.8% over the outrun for this fiscal year, of which 38.5 million are salaries for staff working on various capital projects. Mr. Speaker, the fiscal year 2024-25 225.4 million has been allocated for debt servicing, a decline of 5.8 million or 1.7% on the approved amount on the approved amount for 2023-2024. This decline is due to a reduction in principal repayments from 112.3 million approved in 2023-2024 to 92.9 million for 2024-2025. Interest payments, on the other hand, are expected to remain high due to the increasing trend in variable interest rates. For the fiscal year 2024-2025, 20, 
total interest payments allocated are 232.5 million, representing an increase of 6.2 percent of the approved over the approved amount for the previous fiscal year. 153.4 million of debt servicing represents domestic debt, while 171.5 million represents foreign debt. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to inform this Honorable House that St. Lucia continues to meet its debt obligations in a timely manner and on the terms negotiated. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, I earlier indicated that this budget would have had something for everyone, in particular vulnerable and marginal groups in our society. As in the previous two budgets, we will continue to provide the much-needed support to the not-for-profit organizations, supporting various humanitarian causes, such as the homes for the elderly, for persons with disabilities, and other similar groups. Mr. Speaker, we'll also continue to provide for our state-owned entities and regional international organizations of which we are a part so that the mandates of these organizations can be fulfilled. Among these organizations are OIS the OECS, CARICOM, and the University of the West Indies. As it relates to the University of the West Indies, I want to reaffirm my government's commitment to meeting its obligations to this institution, having trained me and so many of our sons and daughters who in many cases have gone on to make St. Lucia and the wider Caribbean region proud. We can do no less, if only out of gratitude and respect for this highly high quality educational institution. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, transfer payments will increase by 2% to, to over the approved 2023-24 to 243.4 million or an increase of 3.2% over the alt run for 2023-2024. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, this category, goods and services, is the second largest expenditure component of the budget which represents 23% of government expenditure. For the upcoming financial year, 441.3 million has been allocated to this category, representing an 8.8% increase over the amount approved in 2023-2024. <clears throat> the main items of expenditure that account for the increase are goods and services associated with ongoing capital projects like the Millennium Highway Road Construction and St. Jude Hospital. In both cases, the increases stem from higher global prices in sourcing supplies and materials. Other increases in goods and services are increase in rental payments for Orange Grove Plaza, new requests for accommodation for government offices, Proposed implementation of the tax administrative software, upgrade of the government budget module, and the replacement of smart stream financial system for which technical and, technical and software support is no longer provided. <clears throat> In addition, allowances have been made for the establishment of a separate Ministry of National Security and a High Commission in Ottawa, Canada. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, this fiscal year, will be the year of infrastructure in all its forms, the details of which will be articulated in my policy statement next month. Mr. Speaker, as I mentioned before, a concerted effort will be made to remove the administrative bottlenecks in the public service that continue to undermine the efficiency of government services. Mr. Speaker, as it relates to capital expenditure for 2024-2025 budget, the government has allocated 298.9 million and 15.1% increase over the outturn for 2023-2024. It is important to note that capital, capital expenditure constitutes 61.6% .6 of the total investment portfolio of the government, which is approximately 489.484.9 million. The investment portfolio is a combination 
of total project expenditure comprising project capital and project operating and non-project capital. Of the total allocation of 484.9 million for developmental projects, an amount of 130 million or 2 or 26.8 percent of the total is proposed for the Department of Economic Development and the Youth Economy. This amount will cater for payments to St. Jude Hospital Construction Project, 67.2 million, the Constituency Development Program, 22.7 million, Disaster Vulnerability Reduction Project, 10 million, Economic Recovery and Youth Empowerment Project, 6.2 million, Implementation of the Street Lighting Replacement Project, 6.1 million. Mr. Speaker, the Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Transport has been allocated 85.1 million, accounting for 17.6% of the resource envelope for the fiscal year for the following major projects. Millennium Highway West Coast Road Development Project, 41.7 million. Road Improvement and, Man and Maintenance Program, 10 million. Renewable Energy Sector, 9.8 million. Sir Julian Arhant Highway, 8.3 million. Mr. Speaker, this year, the allocation for the Department of Infrastructure will be for new and current road repairs and construction. Payment for DFC contracts are excluded. During the fiscal year 2024, payment to contractors for DFC projects will be deferred because they would have been paid during this financial year. <coughs> this, this means that the government, through management of its fiscal, management of its cash, and its fiscal resources could have found the $60 million due to contractors it would be used that should have been paid in 24, 25, can be used this year for new road infrastructural projects. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, in my policy statement, again I will outline plans for the road construction and repair programs island-wide. Mr. Speaker, of the 47.3 or 9.8 percent of the developmental budget is also being proposed for the Department of Education for the coming year <coughs> for the following projects. St. Lucia Human Capital Resilience Project, 16.4 million. Major repairs, rehabilitation of school plant, 14.2 million. The OECS Skills and, in and Innovation Project, 4.8 million. Mr. Speaker, the Department of Finance has been allocated a sum of 33.4 million or 6.9 percent of the developmental budget to facilitate the implementation of Unleashing of the Blue Economy Project, 11.2 million, the budget module upgrade and implementation, 7 million. Mr. Speaker, my government is also proposing to allocate 29.8 million or 6.2 percent of the developmental budget to the Department of Health to support the Health System Strengthening Project, 6.7 million, the OECS Regional Health Project, 3.6 million, projects supporting post-COVID-19 response, 11.4 million, and projects including the initiatives leading to universal health coverage. Mr. Speaker, consistent with the caring nature of this government, the Department of Equity has been allocated a sum of 25.4 million, or 5.2 percent of the, de the developmental budget, to facilitate the implementation of the home care program, 9 million, the St. Lucia Human Capital Resilience Public Assistance Component, 5.3 million, the BNTF 10 program, 4.3 million, and other social programs. 6.8 million. Mr. Speaker, the Minister of Youth Development and Sports will outline the exciting projects in sports development, including the semi-professional football league, plans for the renovation of playing facilities island-wide, and preparation for the World Cup cricket matches to be played in St. Lucia <coughs> later this year. Mr. Speaker, these are some of the most significant projects. However, 
the ministers will outline the other capital projects in their portfolios during the presentation. Revenue. I now turn my attention to the revenue to be collected to finance the government's expenditure as outlined in the 2024-2025 estimates. I'm pleased to report that revenue collection is now back at pre-COVID levels. We believe that revenue collection can be improved with a reduction in the administrative and procedural bottlenecks that currently exist. For the upcoming year, we are forecasting a collection of total revenue and grants of 1.576 billion, an increase of 1.2% or 18.1 million over the approved amount in 2023-2024, and 8.4% over the amount collected for the end of this fiscal year. The breakdown of revenue and grants as follows. Recurrent revenue, 1.48 billion. Capital revenue, 2.9 million. Grant receipts, 108 million. Recurrent revenue. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, recurrent revenue inflows are projected to increase by 61.9 million relative to the approved estimates of 2023-24, reaching a total of 1.48 billion for the fiscal year 2024-2025. When compared to the, rev the revised estimates or altering for the preceding year, recurrent revenue would have increased by 99.6 million or 7.2%. This increase is expected in part to be due to expansion in construction activities in both the public and private sector and the multiplier effect of continued growth in tourism. The total amount projected for recurrent revenue will be in the form of tax revenue or 1.33 billion and 146.8 million in non-tax revenue. Tax revenue is forecasted to increase by 6.1% in comparison to the odd run for 2023-2024, while non-tax revenue is expected to increase by 19.2% compared to the odd run for 2023-2024. Mr. Speaker, the increase in tax revenue will be, inf will be influenced by the continued recovery in economic activity, increased tax compliance, removal of bottlenecks in key areas, and expansion in the private sector enterprises. The increase in non-tax revenue is to be influenced by transfers from the CIP inflows. Mr. Speaker, an analysis of the tax revenue category is as follows. Tax on incomes and profits. Tax on incomes and profits are projected to be 325.2 million, 7.9 million above the revised estimates of 2023-2024. We expect this category to continue to perform well as economic activity expands. The projection for the main items under this category is as follows. Income tax from corporations. The revenue from income tax from corporations is expected to generate 119.4 million for the financial year 2024-2025 representing a 4.8% increase above the year-end outlook for 2023-2024. This performance is indicative of the continued recovery that is taking place in the private sector. Revenue from individual tax is estimated at 128.7 million. This represents a 2% increase over 2023-2024 revised estimates. The increase is attributed to higher employment levels. <clears throat> Income tax arrears projected at 27 million. The, pro the projected increase is also expected to be driven by increased economic activity. Taxes on international trade transactions. Mr. Speaker, taxes on international trade, customs duties, are projected to increase by 3.4% to reach 283.8 million in 2024-2025, up from the revised estimates of 274.5 million in 2023-2024. Of the total amount to be collected, 157.6 million is expected to come from import duty. 
119.1 million from excise tax, 1.7 million from throughput charges, and 5.4 million from the passenger facility fee. The improvement in outflows from this revenue category is driven by general increases in the cost of imported goods and increases in the volume of imported goods associated with growth in the economy for 2024-2025. <clears throat> Taxes on domestic goods and services are expected to generate 711.3 million, which is 9.2% above the outturned figure for 2023-2024. This category includes value-added tax, VAT, on domestic activity collected by the inland revenue and excise tax. Refe receipts from VAT collected by the inland revenue account for 51% of revenue from this category and are, pro and are projected at 216 million, which represents a 3.9% increase relative to the 2023-24 outrun. VAT from international trade transactions. Collected by the Customs and Excise Department, it's projected to yield 210.3 million in 2024-25, which is 7.1% above the outrun of 196.3 million in 2023-2024. This is expected as the country experiences growth in key sectors such as construction, tourism, wholesale, and retail health and security level. Mr. Speaker, the health and security levy is projected to record an increase of $17.3 million to reach $35.4 million for the fiscal year, which is 10% of health and security expenses. Mr. Speaker, you may recall that the health and security level levy for 2023-2024 collected, we collected 18 million. We expect to collect for this year, 2024-2025, which, which is for the entire fiscal year, we expect to collect 17.3 million only because last year the levy was implemented in July and this year it will be imp implemented for the entire year. We do not forecast any increases in the health and security levy, nor do we intend to increase the goods, that, the goods and services that apply the health and security levy. Health and security expenses for this fiscal year are projected as follows. Provision of health care services, 160.9 million. Capital projects, St. Jude Hospital Reconstruction Project, 67.2 million. Sufra Hospital, this year, 2.1 million. Health System Strengthening Project, 6.8 million. OECS Regional Health Project, 3.6 million. Universal Health Coverage, 2.6 million. Other projects on the health, 16.8 million. Total provision, 260 million. National security. Provision of national security services, 86.3 million. Capital projects, 3.7 million. Total provision, and Mr. Speaker, we did not include the repairs to the police stations nor the expenses involved in the construction of the northern police headquarters. Total provision for health and security, 90 million. Total health and security expenses for this year, $350 million. And from this amount, we expect to collect 35 million from the health and security levy, which means that we have to find at least 300 million dollars to fund health and security. So the health and security levy only 
contributed or intends or intends to contribute only 35 million out of the 350 million dollar outturn or 10 percent of the expenses so the health and security levy will only contribute 35 million dollars to the treasury of this country and out of which we need to spend 350 million dollars for total health and security expenses Mr. Speaker, airport tax. Airport tax is expected to record an increase of 8.2% above the 2023-2024 outturn to reach 39.9 million for the new fiscal year. This category will be positively impacted by an anticipated increase in stillover arrivals for the period 2024-2025, which is estimated to be over 6% increase in tourism arrivals. Service charge on imports is projected to increase by 8.2% or 75% above, <coughs> above the outturn for 2023-2024 to reach 118.1 million for the new fiscal year. The projection will be influenced by higher prices and increased volume of imported items stemming from the economic growth that we will, ex we will experience in 2024-2025. Mr. Speaker, revenue collections from taxes on domestic goods and services account for 48.2% of total revenue, total recurrent revenue, non-tax revenue. The 2024-2025 projection for non-tax revenues amount to 146.8 million, or a 19.2% increase over the 2023-2024 outcome. The following are the major components of non-tax revenue. The Citizens Investment Program. In the projected outturn for this year, 2023-2024, the CIP contributed directly to revenue 45 million. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, as compared to the approved estimates of 90 million. Mr. Speaker, the reason for the difference between the approved estimates and projected outturn for 2324 is due to an increase in demand for the real estate option rather than donations that go directly into the National Economic Fund or government bond options. Mr. Speaker, 64.1 million was received by the National Economic Fund. From that amount, 45 million was transferred directly into revenue. The balance is available for use according to, to the objectives of the fund. In addition, 39.5 million was received from bonds, but is included in bond financing this year. This year, a further 17.4 million was used to fund security, healthcare, social development, and infrastructural development. In reality, Mr. Speaker, the CIP contributed to the economy of St. Lucia $121 million in 2023-2024. Mr. Speaker, this year, it's projected that the CIP will contribute directly to revenue $75 million. Audited financial statements will be made available to the House as stipulated by law. During the policy statement, I will provide a comprehensive explanation of the future of the Citizenship by Investment Program. Income from commercial property tax. Revenue collections from this category, 5.1 million for the new fiscal year. Mr. Speaker, there are, there are some areas in which we anticipate a decline in non-tax revenue for 2024-2025. In transit fees, this revenue line is expected to decline in the short term as these fees will be invested in a PPP arrangement to fund the development of the cruise ports in Kashid and Sufre, an arrangement expected to start at the commencement of the 2024-2025 fiscal year. The sale of goods and services. Revenue collections from the sale of goods and services 
are projected to record a sum of 55.4 million, reflecting a decrease of 8.4 million, or 13.2% below the outrun for 2023. This is due, Mr. Speaker, mainly to the fact that hospital medical bills are not being paid by the people when they attend our hospitals. So the fees that are coming for that, that sector are not received because the fees, hospital, hospital, hospital expenses are not normally paid and not paid by a large percentage of the people of St. Lucia. Grant receipts are estimated at 108, point, 108 million, reflecting a 15.8 million increase over the autumn for 2023-2024 fiscal year. The major contributions to the grant inflows are Republic of China on Taiwan, 43.9 million, the UK Caribbean Infrastructural Partnership Fund, 27 million, the Caribbean Development Bank, 5.6 million, the Government of Saudi Arabia, 5 million, the Foreign Commonwealth Development Office, 2 million, United Nations Environmental Program, 7.6 million, the European Development Fund, 5 million, the United Nations International Children's Education Fund, 2.1 million, the Pan American Development Organization, 1 million. Mr. Speaker, the projected level of revenue and grants and expenditure for the 2024-2025 budget year will result in an overall deficit of approximately 250 million. This deficit is due to the large infrastructure projects to be implemented this year. As economic activity expands, we, we expect a reduction in the fiscal deficits over the upcoming years. The financing gap estimated for the upcoming fiscal year will be covered by a combination of foreign and domestic borrowings. The government's debt strategy is to secure external borrowing on concessionary terms, with 243.8 million to be secured from developmental partners and the remainder 64.1 million sourced from bonds and treasury bills. I repeat that, Mr. Speaker. The government's debt strategy is to secure external borrowing on concessory terms, with 243.8 million to be sourced from the de development partners and the remainder 64.1 million sourced from bonds, treasury bills, and notes. Some of the external borrowing already identified and sourced include Caribbean Development Bank, 42.6 million, International Development Association, either IDA, 141.5 million, the Republic of China on Taiwan, the Exim Bank, 2.1 million, the CARICOM Development Fund, 3.3 million, the Kuwait Fund for Arab, for Arab Economic Development, 4 million, the Government of Saudi Arabia, 30.4 million, Canadian Clean Energy and Forest Climate Facility Fund, 2.9 million. Mr. Speaker, the total budget will be financed as follows. Revenue and grants, 1.576 billion. Loans, 244 million. Short-term borrowing, 200, short-term borrowing, 64 million. Total borrowing, total, 1.884 billion. Refunds, 10 million. Total financing, 1.894 billion. Mr. Speaker, let me remind honorable members that the policy framework which those 2024-2025 estimates have emerged will be articulated in presentation of the appropriation bill, which I will place before the House of Assembly for debate next month, April. Mr. Speaker, the process leading to the presentation of these estimates have required months of consultation, discussion, and long working hours. I, I therefore want to, want to thank the staff of the various ministries and agencies who have been involved in the process, particularly the staff of the Office of the Prime Minister, 
the Ministry of Finance, Economic Development and Youth Economy. A special thanks to the Budget Office, who spearheaded the process on complied and compiled the estimates and expenditure for 2024 and delivered the book eight clear days before delivery today. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, special thanks to you and your staff and staff of the Government Information Service for ensuring all the necessary arrangements have been in place for the conduct of today's proceedings. I want to express my appreciation for the work done by the staff of the National Printing Corporation and the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of the Office of the Prime Minister, who have the staff, the National Printing Corporation, Mr. Speaker, you will be pleased to hear, has been relocated to new premises after years of neglect and indecision by the last administration. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the Immigration Department has also been relocated into new premises spared by the Minister of Home Affairs. <clears throat> so the Immigration Department, a problem that we inherited, the Immigration Department, it has now been relocated to new premises, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I really want to assure the staff of the National Printing Corporation that the printing equipment, that the printing equipment will be upgraded in the year 2024-2025. Mr. Speaker, as I conclude, I wish to express my sincere gratitude to the people of this country, the people of St. Lucia, particularly the constituents of Kashmir East, for allowing, me, for allowing me to serve as a member of parliament and prime minister of St. Lucia. This government remains undeterred and focused undeterred and focused on the development and implementation of policies and programs that will best meet the aspirations of the majority of the people of St. Lucia. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, we will not allow lies and misinformation to deter us. We shall remain focused. Mr. Speaker, the results of 2023 20, Four estimates have shown the positive impact of the government's policies and programs over the years. Figures do not lie. <clears throat> the estimates for 2024-2025 will, in a similar way, continue to be positively impactful on the lives of St. Lucians. I therefore want to thank you, Mr. Speaker, for the opportunity to present these estimates for 2024-2025 to this Honorable House and look forward to the sitting on April 23rd when the government's policy statement will be presented. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.